Okay, so we're going to talk about 3D printing today. So first thing is we're going to compare what uh, a, a two-dimensional inkjet printer to a 3D printer. So as many of you, I'm sure, have at home, you have a two-dimensional two printer which uses paper and it uses an inkjet print head with the ink cartridge and the, the print head rasters the ink onto the paper and the paper comes out of the printer. So a 3D printer works very different. It uses a 3D plastic filament, which is extruded through a, a heated print nozzle. And the plastic is uh, printed onto a build platform, layer by layer, and the build platform then lowers. And so in a, in this is the way that you build up a part. You print each layer on top of each other. So this is just an example. So we take a computer model, and using software, we then slice the model into different layers, and each layer is then printed one at a time in this way. And so here we're printing a frog layer by layer. And each layer is built on top of uh, each, the, the one, the previous layer. Just like this. So we can print just about any type of object, but there are certain types of objects that are more difficult to print. And those are objects which have large overhangs. And so shown here are some objects with um, a 45 degree overhang. And objects which have overhangs of greater than 45 degrees, uh, the printer struggles to print because you need some sort of solid surface on which to print on. And so the software can print different layers of uh, build su support structures, which then you can uh, detach from the part. And in this way, we can build some parts with large overhangs. And so what I have here, this is a, a print that we made. This is a torso of a one-year-old. And w this is called a phantom. And we use this to, um, this is a representation of the human body, which we use to test imaging devices. So if I open it up here, this, this is built in six different pieces. But the, the phantom has different uh, regions of the body defined. So we have the lungs here and then the bone regions and then also uh, the muscle uh, shown in green here. And so the object, object of this uh, phantom is that we, we want to be able to take this phantom down uh, to the clinical center and image it on imaging devices and it will look like an actual human torso. Uh, so we use a special type of plastic here. This is a uh, the black plastic is a uh, contains some iron in it, and that is used to simulate the bones. And so we have here, this is the lungs, these are the, the ribs, this is the scapula, we have the vertebrae, this small cavity here, that's the esophagus, and this is the sternum, and then we have the, the outer soft tissue remainder, and this region here, this is the heart. So each of these, this phantom is uh, built in six different pieces. Each piece took about 15 hours to print for a total of print time of around 90 to 100 hours. Uh, and each piece took used about one whole spool of plastic. So we want to use this for one benefit is we want to print our own phantoms as a cost saving measure because uh, commercialized phantoms are very expensive. But also we want customized phantoms for custom research applications. And so in this case, this is built off of the specific geometry of a one-year-old, a specific one-year-old. Uh, and then we can customize that and build uh, our own phantoms for uh, other uh, applications as well. We're also interested in not just imaging. We want to be able to measure the radiation dose received at different positions in the body. And so in future designs, we're going to include small slots where we can insert radiation dosimeters inside of the phantom so that we can measure the imaging dose received by uh, the patient. And in this way, we can then optimize the imaging protocols in such a way as to uh, keep good image quality while re uh, minimizing the radiation dose received by the patient.